How's it going, guys and girls? This is Ketchup Mustard here once again, bringing you a player interview. Uh, this is obviously we're joined by a very special guest. We have Problem X Promotions, a Foxy Grandpa. All right. All right. So, uh, Foxy, you guys would have heard of him already, um, but this guy recently making a massive splash. Well, another massive splash, I suppose, with uh, winning SoCal Regionals 2015. This was one of the tournaments that had a very generous $10,000 pop bonus, courtesy of NetherRealm Studios and Warner Brothers. Obviously, they were providing Alex Fai and, you know, his crew at Level Up this amazing pop bonus to give these guys something to really play for. So a huge thanks to them and uh, congratulations to the Level Up for hosting such an amazing tournament, which was super duper fun to watch. But obviously, you know, all the congratulations in the world does go to you, Foxy, for taking that tournament so dominantly really thanks uh yeah cheers <laughs> well i suppose to uh to kick things off really um topics we're going to be covering in this interview um will mainly resolve of uh socal regionals itself you know obviously ser 2015 the top eight was fantastic um foxy only losing one match uh, out of the whole top eight and only two matches in the whole tournament so a, a wonderful showing but also i really want to talk about um the upcoming esl season two obviously foxy grandpa you yourself uh were a the, the global number one seed for season one so yeah we're gonna be asking you a lot about that a lot about your performance at scr but i guess we'll kick things off with scr um you play tempest kong lao i know you play buzzsaw as well but america is by all means ready for Kung Lao. Like they have many, even alone in the SCR top eight, you had Slayer, you had Forever King, and obviously Yomi themselves have DJT. So it's a character they are 100% used to fighting. But with how you won so dominantly, what do you reckon makes your Kung Lao specifically different to theirs uh, to give you this th this clear cut edge above them? Um, yeah. But, well, being a character loyalist, I guess, because I've played them since day one. And, you know, I, I just really have fun playing as Kung Lao. He's my guy. He's like the one I always go to first, so I'll always end up playing him the most, I think. So I think... do you think it was just familiarity with Kung Lao? So, like, obviously, like, what, once you understand the character to that degree, like, it doesn't matter what character you're fighting, I suppose, you, you know exactly what your character is capable of in that situation, whereas if you go towards more of a counterpick style, you're, you spread yourself a bit thin, perhaps? No, that's not necessarily true. It's just, um... Well, a counter picker could win just as much as like a character loyalist, as long as like you know your um, options. Really, you just gotta know your options. But I think speaking of knowing options, um, I think one of the things that makes you so well known with Kung Lao is the fact that you don't play um, predominantly. Well, I don't say predominantly, but you don't play exclusively Tempest Lao. You do play the other variations. Um, just for those that may not know or may not understand why you would pick the others, um, what are the matchups? that you really deem appropriate to play Buzzsaw? What is, what is the kind of situation or tool set that you kind of want? And that was why you'd pick Buzzsaw over Tempest, which we don't see very often, but there really is a place for the variation, isn't there? Well, originally I thought that A-list Cage might have been a good one, but um, Michelangelo and Dizzy, like, kind of, well, they didn't destroy it, but it just didn't um, play towards the original plan that I had. So, like, he can still fight Cage, but um, I think Jackie is really good for, at least against Full Auto, because it stops her from being able to shoot the gun. So, you get a free way in, because she's got, like, T-Rex arms. Um, Sector 2.0, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, Grandmaster Sub-Zero is pretty good against, because it can be a way to destroy the clone. But Tempest can do that as well, so it's just in a different way. So moving um, on to um, the rest of the rest of top eight. Right, continue. Oh, sorry. Unless unless you were to go on, I don't want to cut you off. No, no. I think I think that's it. I, I like buzzsaw works in. Oh, anyone that um, doesn't have like a forward advancing wake up in the corner as well. That's that's where buzzsaw gets pretty brutal because it's just fifty like five percent fifty fifties or five and eight percent over and over again. And even if you block it, you still most likely have to like take a risk to get out. All right, wonderful. So moving on to the rest of the top eight. Um, like I guess before it, it was a very entertaining, very explosive top eight. You know, obviously we saw some names there we haven't seen for a while. Obviously, you know, Tyrant was able to make a nice return to a major top eight. We saw, um, you know, uh, DJ AA uh, Holmes managed to make his way there with Cage as well. Only it was stunt double, not A list, which is the only Cage we tend to see nowadays. Do you personally have any um, favorite matches of your own or uh, other matches you saw in the top eight that you think really stood out in the SCR top eight? 
I think Ataru versus DJ Homies match was the uh, best match of the top eight. Was that Easily. just because it's, you coached him to do more down? No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it was genuinely a good match to watch. Like, um, you don't, like you said, you don't really see stunt double, do you? And it was uh, Homies' first tournament as well, so like... Well, as, as in first to, first ever first, tournament? His first major tournament. Oh, wow, so, wonderful. Like, yeah, for him to do that well. And he, he's like a cool guy as well. So uh, he was um, hanging out with uh, me, B Dizzle, and um, the professor, Mr. Professor. Um, yeah, Mr. Doc professor Dr. Pepper, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny guy. Wow. <laughs> he's a funny guy. Yeah, they were cool. All the uh, 187 lot. Very, very cool. Very cool. Um, but I think SCR being such a big deal, many because um, this, this is something I'd, I'd quite like to touch upon. And this isn't obviously, this isn't going into negativity as such. Um, but how do you feel about um, the competition that you did fight? Um, mainly because obviously there's, there was a lot of, um, not sure what word to use, but obviously I think the fact that MIT, DJT and Sonic Fox not being present at the tournament um, definitely kind of, I think what it did do was prevent the results from being um, potentially the same way they tend to go, which would be, you know, DJT placing really highly, Sonic Fox placing really highly and stuff like that. But I think the main thing to to really ask about is what do you feel about the fact that um, arguably some of your bigger competition wasn't there? Obviously, you know, it wasn't that there was no competition for you. You had the likes of Michelangelo, Tyron, Forever King, who had won the last two majors. But how do you personally feel about the level of the competition that you fought? Yeah, everyone there, like, there was quite a lot of good players there, to be honest. Um, like, um, I think in particular the one that stood out to me was Scar. Because he beat King, and, like, when I played him, he, he was doing some nasty shit. So, uh, I, th I think he's uh, he's definitely, like, one of those... Scar was a demolition Sonya, right? Competitor, yeah. Yeah, that is crazy. Um, Dizzy, Dizzy with Cage now. He's a totally different beast. Um... I think I was very impressed by uh, Scar's performance oh, with Sonya. <laughs> Tom Brady. No, I'm just lying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Enjoy that one, Tom. Um, yeah, no, to be honest, there was quite a lot of good players there. Tyrant as well. Michelangelo, he's got some crazy stuff. Oh, then obviously you've got Forever King, who, as as Ketchup mentioned you know, yeah, moments before, really... he was the guy that won the last two Forever majors. King doesn't need to be like, he, he's kind of like, he doesn't need an explanation. He won the last two majors. He's, he's automatically there, isn't he? He's like, yeah, exactly. He is, he's, he's like a top Yomi player. But then also, you know, you had uh, CR's Wound Cowboy was there, winner of EGL, winner of the, yeah, the first he, to 10 against Forever King. He's nasty as well. Yeah, see, yeah, he's, he's pretty pretty disgusting like he's his shinox um i don't know he's always got, had like some very peculiar way of playing but it's it's uh, solid like you can't really fault him so okay so oh yeah, sorry, yeah you know, no, no, you go ahead you go ahead all right brilliant so um speaking of level of competition uh, obviously you are you're from the uk you're a european um i think there really is no denying that you are currently the best international player i mean that really is i think performance wise probably undeniable right now but you are, unlike many, many players, you are well versed in fighting both uh, North American players and international players. Um, do you personally notice, especially coming off the back of you had Red Fight District and then a mere few days later you flew out to, you know, California for SoCal Regionals. Um, having just come off the back of those two tournaments back to back, are there any sort of distinct differences in the play styles of the European international you know those kind of players or the north american players is there anything that you notice there in terms of like how different they play or are they very similar no, i think it's just the character selection mainly and then like the top top players of each scene do play a bit differently i guess like well mad i think madzin for example and nivek are very unique like they're, everyone everyone's got their own sort of um way of playing it's kind of hard to explain but yeah. So you're saying it depends yeah. more on, on the player than the yeah, scene they happen yeah. to be a part of? Yeah. The location is irrelevant, it's just the way you play. Oh, that's that's good to hear. It's good to hear. And, but moving in to, from what that links into, obviously, you know, location doesn't matter in the day where online play is so so prominent. Um, 
With that being said, the newest information that has been revealed about ESL Season 2, it's another 100k pot to win for, um, for the finals again, another weekly $1,000 to be won. Um, you were the global number one seed for ESL Season 1. You had the most um, you had the most seeding points of anyone globally that took part in ESL Season 1. Um, I would say it's safe to assume that we're going to be seeing you again in Season 2, are we? Well, yeah, I'll try and uh, earn my spot there again. Hopefully this time I'll be better prepared though, because I just got like slapped about by a pig. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but the thing is, yeah, that that was it was it was a performance you weren't exactly used to after weeks of like dominant success in Europe. Like, like let's be real here, no one in week one even came close to beating you. Aside from Sumerian, in was it week one or week two? I can't remember if it, uh, what it was. I think it may have been the very first, week, but so it was a week one and two, I believe. They gave us some good grand finals. Yes, so I wouldn't. Um, I think. Off, off the back of him, how amazingly well Pig performed at ESL, I think, although Pig is not very happy about the current state of Kenshi, I really think that there probably was, there's no way you can prepare for Pig's Kenshi and unless you fight Pig's Kenshi. It really is a completely different beast as far as fighting the character goes. Similar to really fighting you with Kung Lao, I think. I mean, that, that's just my personal opinion, really. And that there yeah, are I guess really... that goes back to the, the player uh, the player's style. Cause yeah, good point. Pig has historically had a pretty good style to counter a style like mine. So that forces me to like discipline my game. Like You have to follow rules, basically. Learn from this. Yeah, learn <laughs> from this. Well, with... I, did, I did. It's like losing to Madsen as well. Like He destroyed me as well, and I learned from that. Well, hopefully we get a chance to uh, to see these runbacks in ESL Season 2. Um, I mean, moving into Season 2, we know there are some players who were uh, phenomenal players around the EU um, that didn't get the opportunity to retake really part in Season 1. Obviously, in North America as well, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But like, I'm, I'm talking strictly for EU because that's obviously what we're the most used to, um, especially with obviously Foxy's performance, our commentary, stuff like that. Um, we know that uh, ED Ixey, from Birmingham is going to be taking part in ESL Season 2. We know that Storms and Estacada is going to be taking part. Hopefully, I'd like to see Zarakamaka from the UK um, take part in some of them because his Liu Kang yeah, is, he'll, he'll, is like, think. undiscovered but phenomenal. Is there any yeah. players that you really want to take part that you didn't get the chance to fight in Season 1? Well, it's not like I'd look forward to fighting IXE because that guy plays like a robot. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he's insane. And Zarakamaka as well. They're both pretty robotic, to be honest. I'd like to see them fight each other. That'd be pretty uh, interesting. Um, yeah, those two. Uh, Storm. Storm is like some crazy Takeda player. He'll, he's got like some Quan Chi, like, unblockable madness going on. Shiro Ryu, Lo Kunai into overhead shenanigans. Summoner Takeda. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's Summoner Takeda, yeah. <laughs> That's fun in games. I think the, the, before we kind of um, hit this on the head, I really kind of figured like, so we have ESL Season 2 coming out and we have a lot of money to be played for. And there's obviously a lot more, we seem to see a lot more offline competitors really trying to sort of embrace Season 2. I think I, I spoke to a lot of players that um, I think we're going to do like some kind of video on this when more information gets announced about the importance of ESL and the more combat community. But um, many players really felt like they missed out on season one you know they didn't they chose not to play in season one because they weren't a fan of online and stuff but then when they saw sonic fox win sixty thousand dollars in a day i think a lot of players really kind of uh, assessed why didn't i enter that why didn't i i go for a chance at that for you um obviously i think you are a prime example what do you think of the current competitive state of more Kombat x like what do you think esl um and the online league has done for the game competitively i think esl is like amazing everything about ESL is on point like everything I just can't fault it like they they uh, they get loads of loads of people playing they you don't even have to pay to enter and if you like place you um, you win some money and if you keep placing you get sent to California and they feed you chicken and waffles and all this uh, <laughs> good, good cooking oh the catering oh yeah. the catering was something Shout else ESL's <laughs> catering yeah, yeah, they're they and they're all like really friendly, and they uh, get you to do like funny videos and whatnot. You know, like the intros and the yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, and their production quality. It's all good. Like, it's, it's it can only like, help the like competition move forward. Really, considering it's something that the yeah, MK like, community the prize pools 
got, enough has got to be like well to inspire some people to try it well that's kind of that's kind of what I, what I mean when I say like it's 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 definitely something that the MK community hasn't had before but it's to get it in such quantity so regularly um you know with all the bells and whistles like it is it's more than just the money it's more than regular competition it's more than the leagues it's more than the opportunities like it's it's all of it in one go and clearly we can see players like yourself like sonic fox um even you know players like rio who are a perfect legend who didn't really enter too many of the esl season one weeklies but still managed to make it to the finals on you know their natural skill as players bringing them up um, to the few weeks they did enter, they were first placing, second placings, and those few weeks alone was enough to get them there. Obviously, yourself, you were there through six <laughs> victories, so like there, there was never any question that you were going to be there in the finals. But season two, we may see some uh, some different results. But I guess in the EU, you are the one to beat in the ESL season two. Yeah, I, I don't honestly don't think I'm going to like just run through it like I did before. I think people are a little bit do you suppose people are a little bit more awake now i guess oh yeah but oh i don't know yeah they're, they're more awake yeah that's for sure and the fact that like ike and zarakameka are playing as well and yeah there's and everyone's like gonna be practicing for it so you like that kind of answers your question doesn't it yeah well this it's definitely the sort of matchups that i can't wait to see obviously as 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 a British guy, as someone from the UK, um, we didn't see too much UK representation in the ESL season one. We saw a few, obviously. We, we had yourself, we had Use for Glue, Mr. Swizzer, and even Falcon. Um, now, YP Falcon did enter um, a few of the weeks, but you were the only one that really made it through to the end. So, I, I would personally like to see a few more UK players make it through to season two finals. They're more than capable of doing so, but then again, the rest of Europe has really stepped their game up as well. We know Taco's entering again, Madsen's entering again. Like, it's going to be. I think this is going to be a lot Bloodbath. closer. Exactly. And that's what I can't wait to see. A good way to put it, I think. All right. So before we tighten this up, there's probably going to be some questions that many people are wondering. What is PXP? What is Problem X Promotions? Problem X Promotions. It's, uh, well, it's Problem X's um, like child, I guess. It's, he just wants to form a team of like top, top players like for representatives. Uh, of their game fly out and you know hopefully win a few events here and there or you know week after week well obviously the reason like that. Of the, the only reason you could uh, attend socar regionals was because problem x had sent you there to compete right yeah yeah uh, he's he's just like he's, he's a good guy he's he's got faith in me to like perform so he's um offered to send me to all these tournaments and effectively, yeah, PXP just... is he wants a team of people like yourself, then I suppose to to go yeah. fly around, and be himself, sent, and win. It's not like he's, he 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 um, does the same thing in Street Fighter. Yeah, it? of course. But I guess I guess that, that that must be something that's quite um, quite reassuring, knowing that effectively, like he, he uh, yeah he does the same thing. He yeah. understands like the whole scenario. And like I guess like as your team captain, he's going to one hundred percent relate to and understand every issue or every yeah, uh win or eh, lose. Oh, yeah he, he, get, he understands that yeah huge shouts uh absolutely huge shouts to problem x um really cool guy we, we've all known him for quite a while but i think now he's decided to sort of make this choice to to start having you know backing players and sending them around it definitely seems to have been a good call right now um but on the topic of that then i think probably a final question is what's next for you are there any big majors that you're planning on attending now that you've won socar regionals obviously it's, you know there's gonna be a lot of players i think gunning for you in future events um we'll see i'm not i'm not sure at the minute we'll see where uh where the um, problem says that uh i'm gonna go and i'll go there and try and win just compete cool brilliant that's what you can do really isn't it try and compete and see how well you do so uh, before we go do you have any final shout outs or anyone you'd like to mention before we go um everyone at scr was like yeah it was, it was a good time we all had good times if you could see me right now, you, are, you could see me throwing up the cheeky sign. <laughs> oh, we, yeah. we, we may have saw that once or twice over the weekend. I don't think you did it enough. Yeah, I don't think they understand. Like, Rip didn't understand that, did he? No. <laughs> oh, well. If he didn't, if he doesn't know, he doesn't know. In the end, the world will understand one at a time. Well, I will become, um, am I going to transcend into a meme? Or will I <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I, think, I think that will transcend into a meme. That, that, is, that, that is definitely going to transcend. Yeah, on, the flag. The flag. 
<laughs> yeah, that that's definitely you know I think we should end on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, thank you very much. Oh, there's one th- no final thank you from us. Um, you know, it's taking time out of your day. You've literally only just returned to the UK, haven't you? So the fact you've done this immediately is uh, very very cool of you. Um, yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> but, that, that, but that's it you know uh, c- congratulations from us once again uh, one one more thank you to nether realm and warner brothers for backing so yeah Shouts. i agree Shouts, i, I uh, agree with their support shout out to alex Baye and level up the guys that ran an amazing tournament as always hopefully you guys you know i've no doubt you'll put on just as if not more of an amazing show next year um i am ketchup joined by mustard joined by problem next promotions foxy grandpa uh, and that's your lot, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Don't forget. Hey, Foxy Grandpa. Like well... a tribe called Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys, for more content. Um, and we will catch you later. See you Take next care. time. Good a bit.